eternal yet ever new his advent and his proximity his mystical leelas and his songs every mischief and miracle a message memorable every pain and travail a precept enacted as the bud blossomed to reveal a thousand petals it can only be said that the fragrance of the first few years was unique it is after karnam subama passed away in the july of 1944 in the december of 1945 this is the invitation card for swami's grah pravesham it says shri satya sai baba bhakta madali and correction has been made into mandali request the pleasure of your company on the occasion of grah pravesham opening ceremony of new bhajana mandiram at puttapati and again correction has been made r bukapatnam po penukonda taluk anantpur district on friday the 14th of december 1945 at 10 am shri satya sai bhakta mandali so this was the invitation card that went out to about 200 people who attended the glorious opening ceremony of the mandir the pata mandiram in 1945 when swami was carried in a kind of a basket in a procession and brought to his new home there is a picture this is another chariot that was made there were two processions so this is the picture of bhagwan on the day of the inauguration of the pata mandiram as i said there was one more soul who was interested in getting this boon sanction from swami that at the at the at the time of parting that he should have swami's presence by his side and swami should pour water into his mouth when he dies and that is the grandfather of swami shri kondama raju initially they had a huge household all of them living together and after a certain point he decided that he should distribute the property between the two brothers and after giving away everything he told that i am going to live separately i'm going to cook my own food so the sons asked him don't you want anything for yourself so when asked thus kundam raju said if you really want to give me something give me satyam i will take satyam with me and that is how this beautiful relationship started because the grandfather and this divine grandchild lived together in a small hut kundam raju kundam raju sa swami ishwarama ani pilichadu he said ishwarama అనగా ఈ దేహానికి తల్లి ద మదర్ ఆఫ్ భగవాన్ అప్పుడు ఏ మామా అని వచ్చింది అండ్ ఈశ్వరమ స్టార్టెడ్ రీచింగ్ దట్ ప్లేస్ సేయింగ్ వాట్ ఇస్ ఇట్ యు వాంట్ ఈ పొద్దు ఇంకా నేను ఉండను ఈ సెడ్ ఐ యామ్ నాట్ గోయింగ్ టు లివ్ ఎనీ లాంగ్ కొంచెం పూర్ణం చేసి పెట్టు అండ్ గట్ ద సమ్ రైస్ పుడ్డింగ్ బి రెడీ పూర్ణంలో ఇది పెట్టి కొంత ఒక చిన్నది ఒక వోడిగ చేసి పెట్టు అండ్ ఆల్సో మేక్ సర్టన్ అదర్ ప్రిపరేషన్స్ ఆల్సో ఎవ్వరికి తెలియదు ఆమెనే చేసి పెట్టింది she alone made these preparations aa chesi pettin tarvata tarvata thano ekkado poyinattuga maiti baiti poyinattuga poyadu and kondam raju left that place as if he has got some job to look at aalo pala tattalo pettichadu ee yokka odiganu and all these things are served in a plate petti aayana vache tapatiki nenu teesukeli tattanu pettanu and swami kept this plate in front of him swami ఏమిటి మీ తెలివి తెలియతుడు ఏమి మీ శక్తి సామర్థ్యములు మాకేమి అర్థం కావటం లేదే కొండమ రాజు సెట్ స్వామి హౌ పవర్ఫుల్ యు ఆర్ హౌ మిస్టీరియస్ యు ఆర్ వి ఆర్ నాట్ ఏబుల్ టు కాంప్రిహెండ్ అప్పుడు పెట్టి దాన్ని కొంచెం కలిపి ఆయన నోట్లో పెట్టాను స్వామి మిక్స్డ్ అండ్ మేడ్ హిమ్ ఈ అప్పుడు ఆయనకు 102వ సంవత్సరము హి వాస్ ఏజ్ 102 అట్ ది టైం అట్టి వాళ్ళైనప్పటికీ నడుచుకొని కొత్త మంది ఆయనకు వచ్చేటువంటి వాడు అట్ దట్ ఏజ్ ఆల్సో హీ కుడ్ వాక్ వెల్ 
ఎందుకు నీవు ఇట్లా వస్తావు పశువులంతా తిరుగాడుతుంటాయి ఏమైనా నెట్టితే కూడా నువ్వు కింద పడిపోతే చాలా ప్రమాదం కదా అని నేను చెప్పేవాడిని భగవాన్ యూస్ టు కాషన్ హిమ్ వై డి యూ వాక్ దట్ లాంగ్ డిస్టెన్స్ యూ మే స్లీప్ ఆన్ ద వే స్వామి నీవే మా అండదండలుగా ఉంటున్నప్పుడు ఏ యొక్క పశు వచ్చి నన్ను నొట్టుతుంది అని చాలా ధైర్యంగా చెప్పేటువంటి వాడు and his response was this when swami when you are by my side as a support no other thing can come in our way erga inga kondamaraju inti degiriki vellanu and swami went to the residence of kondamaraju atta poi cheppi tatta iskonu vachindi ishwarama ishwarama brought the plate idi go tata ee rotte meer tinandi ee odiga meer bujinchandi and bhagwan said grandfather you eat this this preparations నోర్ తెచ్చాడు నేనే తుంచి కొంచెం 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 నోట్లో పెడుతూ వచ్చాను స్వామి మేడ్ హిమ్ ఈట్ బిట్ బై బెట్ బా ఎంత మధురంగా ఉంటుండా అది ఈశ్వరమ్మ నీవు ఏనాడు కూడా ఇలాంటి ఓడిగ చేయలేదు కదా ఈనాడు ఎందుకు ఇంత గొప్ప ఓడిగా ఉంటుండా అది అని చాలా మెచ్చుకున్నాడు and kondamaraju praise ishwarama you never prepared like this preparations are excellent he said swami nenu kori kori chestunte anni tappule jarige tvandi inadu e vidhangaanu nenu koraledu tamaru chepparu swami ichchadu nan nenu chestunnanu when i do it purposefully things are not in the way as they are today ee shakti samachyam emi kaadu tan mama anindi these are not my skills and capacities no appadiki pedda venkamaraju chinna venkamaraju adani kumarulu vaadu iddaru kudanu vacharu in the meantime pedda venkamaraju chinna venkamaraju sons reached there vachata padiki vaari kuda konchem pettadu and swami served them also anta tini tarvata neelu tragaadu amma naaku nidra vastundi ani pandukunnadu then he drank water and said i am sleepy and rested i have cheppindi isarama idi nidra kaadu isarama said this is not sleep idi swami yokka sankalpame this is swami's will and this is the school in which swami joined after completing his primary schooling in in puttaparthi swami moved to kamlapuram kamlapuram which is in the kadappa district of andhra pradesh here swami was staying with the in-laws of seshma raju garu because seshma raju as i said he had gone for his teacher training training program so in this house swami used to stay along with his sister in law and the family and from here swami attended the middle school in kamlapuram see the idea of sending swami to kamlapuram was that he should not spend his time you know cooking rasam for grandfather doing all the household chores but that is what swami ended up doing at kamlapuram also sheshamaraju was absolutely busy because he had to go for his teachers training program because of which the only man at home was swami and so swami would continue to do all the household chores and the most important one was getting water see we don't realize what a blessing from god it is that every morning we just wake up and open the tap and we have water how many people have worked behind the scenes to ensure that when we open the tap we get water do we express our gratitude to all those people the person who is pumping the water to the top in the corporation who is ensuring pipes and getting it here the watchman who puts on the motor at 4 in the morning so that 5 in the morning we can have water shouldn't our life be something so that these people who have helped us brush our teeth have our bath also get benefited in some manner that's a point for us to ponder in swami's case it was not like that he himself used to go he would walk 2 kilometers there are no photographs so a depiction of a artist has to do here he would walk 2 kilometers to the penna river and fetch water twice a day because morning what is got will get over by evening again in the evening you have to get water and by the time swami walks 2 kilometers up 2 kilometers down 4 kilometers by the time he goes and comes while coming he is carrying the heavy load it would almost be about 8:30 to 9 in the morning swami would quickly have his breakfast what was swami's breakfast i feel very ashamed you know because in the morning suppose if there is idli i'll say mother you made idli just 5 days back it was idli i expect that at least there's a variety for 9 days after 9 days you can repeat 
this is so many breakfast items don't repeat swami had the same breakfast item each morning each morning you know and what was it it was not some freshly cooked food previous day there would be a ragi ball called sankati and whatever is remaining it becomes hard becomes hard like a cricket ball and they pour water over it add some salt mix it that is swami's breakfast swami would have that as his breakfast and leave for school you know it is interesting to contrast the life that swami led in kamlapuram even as we are going to narrate more and the life that swami led in the later years because in the time when swami lived in kamlapuram swami showed us how do you lead a dignified life when you have nothing when you have absolutely no clothes to wear when you don't have good food to eat when you have no money to spend how do you lead your life when you have nothing but still live with dignity years later when swami had this beautiful kulvant hall built a mandir which is so ornate puttaparthi which was so beautiful a city of its own swami had everything you know when we speak to some of the devotees now they talk of the access which swami had to wealth which is phenomenal they said if swami had said yes they would have paved the roads with gold that was how how much access swami had to wealth in kamlapuram swami showed us when you have nothing how do you live in the years later swami showed us when you have everything how do you live because when he had everything he lived in the smallest apartment in puttaparthi you know the students who had the opportunity to go and once clean the room where swami stayed in the mandir in the kulant hall when swami later shifted to purnachandra hall they said they broke down they said is this where swami lived for 40 years that room hardly had any ventilation there was nothing in that room that I mean even the word spartan is too spartan to describe that room because there was nothing in that room there was hardly a window which would bring in light and swami spent 40 years in that room without complaining once so he showed us when you have everything when you're the richest one you can have access to all the wealth in the world how do you live you know in in the days in kamlapuram one very interesting episode happens as the description given by arvind swami was definitely not a person of any regard in that household he was one who was doing all the work in the house one day after fetching water after doing all the work in the house Swami came and sat on a rocking chair. You know that was the only chair in the house. There was not much furniture in the house. One Subaraju, he was Seshamaraju's brother-in-law, his wife's brother. He was also living in the same household. He comes and starts shouting at Swami. He says, "Do you think you're a prince? Do you think you're a king? You're coming and sitting on this rocking chair. Get up, go and do the work." And Swami was a little boy, you know, hardly eight or nine years, and very firmly Swami tells this man. Today you are making me get up from this chair mark my words a day will come when you will clean a silver throne for me and I will come and occupy it Many years later after the Patamandiram was built when royalty started flowing into Swami's presence you had the Rani of Chincholi the royal family of Sandur many of them coming and you know offering all kinds of wealth to Swami there was one devotee by name Ranjot Singh and he wanted to offer something to Swami so During one of the Shivratri celebrations he got a beautiful and ornate looking silver throne commissioned for Swami he got it made and brought it to Swami's presence and he pleaded with Swami to accept it and Swami accepted it so during the festivities the devotees came up to Swami and said Swami shall we unpack this throne shall we have it for Shivratri Swami said uh, don't want for Shivratri I'll tell you when to do it so Shivratri came Shivratri went The next festival came which was Guru Purnima. They said Swami shall we use it for Guru Purnima? So we said uh, don't want now you leave it I'll tell you when to do. So this Guru Purnima also came Guru Purnima also went. Then Dashara came. So when Dashara came a lot more devotees came. So Swami called one person and Swami said we will use this this time. We'll use it for Dashara. So this person comes and he unpacks this chair and even as he unpacks he breaks down into sobs. The devotees who were there were wondering Why is he crying? Because the person who was unpacking and cleaning the throne was that same Subaraju who threw out Swami from that rocking chair. Even as he was cleaning that silver throne of Swami, he recollected those words of Swami. He said, "Swami's words have come true. I am cleaning a silver throne for Swami, which Swami will occupy." You know, these were incidents which Swami 
if you if you look at it alone as that incident you say what arrogance was that you know swami said with so much arrogance but it was not with arrogance it is swami would say self confidence like one of our lecturers would say imagine the self confidence of swami a 14 year old boy saying that i have work to do the world is waiting for me my devotees are waiting for me what self confidence was it because as we said he came with nothing he lived with nothing but he said i have to transform the world the world is waiting for me and swami says that in this ultimate goal that we seek in our life the foundation is self confidence and then he says build the wall of self satisfaction <laughs> and what you have is the mansion of self realization i really feel all of us should at least hear one discourse a day half discourse a day and see what an impact it has on our lives it is one thing to get to know the teachings it is another thing to hear it in a voice that the lord chose for himself prema swarupulara embodiments of love there is magic in that voice there is love in that voice there is confidence in that voice and this love this confidence we will not get if we hear anybody else telling about it we have to hear swami himself and he had come to kamlapuram he had only one pair of clothes he would use only that just like he had the same breakfast every day he had the same clothes every day he would come back drape a towel around himself and wash the clothes wait for them to dry in case they didn't dry fast enough swami had one more shirt and this shirt his mother had stitched from an old sari of hers and he would wear that if anything happened to this dress and anything happened to this uniform he could not ask for another dress he did not have enough money to take another pin also and that is why he would break the thorns long thorns he would select and break that was his pin he would pin wherever the clothes were torn he would put that using it as a pin and that is why he was in a kind of trouble when it was announced that a pushpagiri fair is to be attended now in those days you know education was so wonderful service to mankind was not considered as something very special it was considered as part and parcel of each one's duty every student was expected to spend some time to go out and serve the people and come back because just as it is important that we learn math science and arts it is important that we learn to serve it should be part of our life one is for living one is for life and that is why every year from this kamlapuram school from the middle board school the students would go as volunteers to a cattle fair a massive cattle fair that would be held for more than a week in the precincts of a temple the chennakeshava swami temple this temple still exists to this day on the way from kamlapuram to pushpagiri and in front of it is a huge area where their cattle are brought and cattle are sold you know when we read the ramayana we often talk of the love and the respect which lord rama had especially from the citizens of ayodhya you know any kingdom where you have a good king where you have a good prince the people of that land will be fond of the king and the prince right what is so special about people being fond of lord rama just like how they would worship the king worship their prince they would have been fond of lord rama but when an avatar comes in any role when an avatar comes taking up any form the souls which have pined for proximity the souls which have yearned to be near the lord and to have his love they take all those prime positions around him in whatever form it takes whatever form it calls for so that is why it is said that those devotees who have year, for years them done tapas they get born as citizens of ayodhya they get born as the monkeys who helped rama they might not have looked up to the lord and said that you know here is lord rama he is an avatar he is lord vishnu but in some form in some even worldly attachment they have a, a kind of a connection with the lord similar to that if you see in swami's life there are many many people 
who might not have looked up to Swami as an avatar, who might not have looked up to Swami as God to come in a human form, but in their own way had a selfless and pure love for Swami, which actually, many years later when Swami would refer to them, Swami would say, he was a great devotee. The teachers who taught Swami in these schools in Kamlapuram and Urukunda, they might not have worshipped Swami, but referring to them, Swami would say, they were great devotees. And two such souls which got the name of they were great devotees and lovers of the Lord were two classmates of Swami called Ramesh and Paresh. And endless are the discourses where Swami referred to these two little boys. Swami would say that they would sit on either side of Swami in the class and they would be so fond of Swami who wouldn't be. But these were two children who had the opportunity to be the best friends of Swami. So when this Pushpagiri fair and the need to go to this fair came up, you had to have uniforms, the scout uniforms, to be worn for this Pushpagiri fair. Swami would say that this one particular boy, Ramesh, his father was a Sirastidar. Now you have a Tasildar, I don't know what rank it was, but a high ranking officer in the government. The name of the post was Sirastidar. So this young boy, Ramesh, his father was Sirastidar. And this boy was very similar to Swami in stature. So this little boy realized that Swami does not have a pair of khakis to be worn for this Pushpagiri fair. So he goes up to his father and he tells his father, the father, this scout uniform, no, this khaki, I somehow have become very fond of it. Can you get me one more pair? I like it so much. The father is very well off, so he gives him one more pair. So what does this boy do? Neatly packs it up, rolls it, folds it, puts it in a paper cover and writes a note. Ramesh and Paresh are so intimate to Swami. Age 11 and 13. At that young age, they had such an intense love for Swami. If their parents got stitched dress, there's no money with Swami. Swami never accepted any from anybody. Ramesh got two pairs of dresses made and kept hidden Raju, in the desk. And Ramesh said, Razu, if you don't accept this dress, I'll commit suicide. Swami said, this should not be our relationship. It is only connection heart to heart. Love to love. Love to love only. It is only heart to heart. Love to love, not giving to Swami. And receiving and giving. And Swami said, Love to love. 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 Hinting that nowadays, my students, nothing to say about them. Ramesh and Paresh wanted Swami to accompany them to this fair. Every child in the class wanted Swami to come along because Swami was their hero. Swami was their guru. Swami was their leader. And as Swami said, children would listen to Him. And because of that, all the teachers wanted Swami to come. Why? So the teacher felt, if Raju comes to the fair, then the other parent will send their children also. If Raju doesn't come, then the other parent will not give importance to this. So in order to ensure that all the children come for the fair to serve as volunteers, the teacher also wanted that Raju come. The thing was, it was said compulsory, you need to have a uniform, a whistle. This is the minimum thing. Now Swami doesn't have money to buy that. And he has already refused the gift from the friend. So how can Swami go? So Swami would say in his discourses that I decided that I will not go. So on the day when all the students had to leave, they all needed to give 12 anas because it includes the price for the bus journey back to and fro and for stay over there. That was the money that they had to pay. Since Swami did not have the money, he stayed back at home. All the children came off to his house. Raju, you should come. Raju, you should come. 
Raju, you must come with us. Swami said, now what shall I do? So he decided to feign sickness. And then Swami would say in his discourses, see, if I tell I have got fever, they can check my temperature and know that it is. Then I will be caught. Therefore, I decided to tell I have got stomach ache. You can't check stomach ache. So Swami started telling stomach ache, stomach ache. But the boys are not leaving. Finally, a teacher comes and says, see, if Swami says stomach ache, leave him. And in the disco, Swami would sweetly say that as the boys went away, my stomach ache also went away. So that was how that was how Swami escaped boarding the bus that took all these children 30 kilometers away to the location where the cattle fair would be held near the Chennakeshava Swami temple. The beauty with Swami is Swami tells that even as those boys were leaving disappointed, Swami's heart sank. Swami said, you know, Swami was seeing their sunken faces. Swami said, if I could just still go. I can at least give a little joy to these friends who are so devoted to me. So Swami said that 12 anas I definitely cannot afford. But as it was described, a good amount of that 12 anas was for that bus journey. So Swami thought that if I can walk that 11 kilometers and reach Pushpagiri, he can save that much money. So he said said still he would have to arrange for at least 4 or 5 anas. So what Swami decides, Swami has these old textbooks with him. They are not old actually. Yeah, because Swami describes, but my textbooks were brand new. Because I never used them. I never read from them. I never had the need to read from them. So even in our times, we always had these textbooks being passed on and sometimes selling it for a you know, lower price. So instead of buying a brand new set of textbooks, you buy used textbooks. So Swami found a suitable buyer for these textbooks, a little boy who said that he would buy it. And he offered 10 anas. He said, I can give you 10 anas because that's the worth of all the textbooks which Swami was giving him. But Swami said, I don't need 10 anas. No, that's the beauty of Swami. The value of what he was selling was 10 anas. But he said, I don't have a need for that much money. And whenever you have more than what you need, that is where the devil steps in. Not in the case of Swami, but Swami always leaves messages for us. It was not for himself. So Swami said, 10 anas is what I can rightfully get. But what I need is only 5 anas. So he tells the boy that you just give me five anas, it's enough and you can take all my textbook. But this was a little boy, you know, he had no money. So what did he do? That that time paper money was not as popular as now. Now of course coins have no value. If you bring anas, even the coffee shop fellow will not give you anything. Those days, there would be something called dhammidi. Or, you know, this dhammidi is a Andhra term in the Mysore state which was there, currently Karnataka, it used to be called Kasu, different things. But basically they were Dhammidis. Three Dhammidis made one Bottu, four Bottus made one Ana. And 16 Anas make one rupee of today. So you can imagine what that Dhammidi is. So this boy had all his money in Dhammidis and Bottus. He gave a lot of coins to Swami. He bundles all these coins, five anas worth of dhamidis and bottus, and he decides to return home because now he has got sufficient money to manage at the fair. As he is walking, as he reaches his house, as his picture depicts, that cloth tears and all the coins fall. And they make a clanking sound. The sister-in-law comes rushing out. And she is convinced, she doesn't even talk to Raju. She is convinced that this boy must have stolen the money. She gives him a sound thrashing, sound beating, confiscates all the money and throws him out of the house. 